Hi, I'm Neil Vinnie Kirk. We're in the studio here, and I have my friend Marco from Germany. He's a commercial photographer, and he came to visit New York, and I thought, at the same time, let me pull him in the studio, and we get to play around a little bit. And I have Juliana as our model. And we decided on a theme that we're going to work with continuous lighting only. And again, the challenge in the studio is always, you have a rectangular box, but you have to make it look interesting. So we want to create a sense of depth in the studio using something, smoke, extra lights, something in the background to create foreground, background, just a little bit of depth in the studio. So let's see what we can come up with. Okay, so for this sequence, I'm going to use a 120 millimeter lens, which is along a focal length for portrait shots, um, which on a full frame is equivalent to 85 millimeters about. Um, I'm working in a very confined space. I, Neil only gave me a very small foam board to work with, so I'm going to have to compress the shot and still get sort of uh, distance and, and uh, field of view in there. So what I did, I punched little holes. I have a light set up behind it, use it like a gobo. And then Neil is going to spray in some aerosol, and I'm going to have our beautiful model Juliana stand very close. And so that's where we get sort of dimension into the picture. So let's do this. Okay, so this is our setup here. We have continuous lighting from the back through this cardboard with punch holes. And then to give it a bit of a, a rim light and a kicker, we have a Fresno spot up here. Okay, Juliana, um, I want you to follow my fingers with your eyes right here. Find something behind to focus on. Stay like that. Neil, you get ready to spray. And so, okay, Neil, you can go ahead and spray. Awesome. Du hast mich. <laughs> Rammstein. Very nice, Juliana. Beautiful. Beautiful. No, it's okay. Beautiful. I have to come up a little bit. Yes. Let's go this way. For this sequence, I'm going to use a 110mm f2 lens, but because it's a larger sensor, it roughly translates to an 85 1.4 on a full-frame camera. The main light is this LED panel here. Uh, I'm throwing it against a V-flat. It's set to incandescent white balance. The background is another LED panel set to daylight, which means it'll shift to blue if I change my white balance of my camera to incandescent. And I'm going to short light her. It's going to be a nice soft light on her and hopefully look nice and cinematic. And a hint of a smile, and then give me serious. Tilt your head even more. I like that shoulder. Give me a little shoulder shrug. I like the forward tilt a little bit more. You look fantastic. As you are, don't change anything. Go one inch shuffle towards the canvas backdrop. That's it. Now you're now in the shadow here. Come a little forward. About there, yeah. And a little bit of a tilt. Take a half an inch shuffle this way. Good. And a little forward tilt.
<laughs> so good. Can we try one where you're leaning here and kind of... That does look good. Change the light a little bit here and a little more straight onto the camera. Over there? Yeah. And camera. Don't change anything, but rotate a little open. That's it. It's a fraction of a, even more. That's it. Too much, come back. That's it. And lift your chin a tiny bit and that hint of a smile. <laughs> cool. So that looks really good. Mm -hmm. I, I like that curve of your body and your head slight tilt. There we go, keep that. Even more of a tilt, there you go. Really slouch it a little bit. Lift your chin. Hold that, I want to move. Look, tilt your head and kind of look slightly past me. And without changing anything, drop your chin slightly and don't change anything but look at the camera. And a hint of a smile. There you go. Mm -hmm. I like that one, just the hint of a yes, shoulder. Yeah, I like that one. Thank you. In this sequence, um, where I'm going is, I'm using a different lens. I'm going more wide angle because remember the subject was um, having depth and creating space in a box. So I'm now using a 32 to 64 millimeter on this medium format camera so I can go fairly wide angle um, or I can go to a sort of modern uh, portrait lens view with an equivalent of 50 millimeters on a full uh, frame. So we have our beautiful model very flat in front of a wall. And um, I've posted two available lights at uh, Kelvin 5600, so just about daylight balanced. And I'm throwing very harsh and direct light on her. Um, it's gonna cast fairly hard shadows, which then gives us depth because these shadows, since my light is coming from an upward angle, is more or less falling out. So while setting up I had the idea it would, pretty cool, it would be pretty cool if we would pull Juliana away from the wall and give her one pose and of course we would have the, the pose uh, duplicated by the shadow on the wall, put the camera on the tripod and uh, take the same shot, everything, same setting, same height, give her a different pose and then compose these two images, hensing the shadow is the second person. It could be her alter ego. It could be her devil. It could be her angel doing something else, right? It's giving me a second half shadow. So I'm probably gonna have to kill, kill this light here to get a, a harder shadow. And then I'm going to move this light a little bit harder. All right, so we need to think of two poses, okay? We maybe need one that is very stable like this. So this could be meaning you're showing the cool side of things and you're very calm and very controlled. Yes, yeah, something like that. And it's very important to keep your feet where they are because the next pose should be something that is, I would call it party or being crazy or just being angry and yelling and hair flying. But your feet have to stay the same and your legs because we're trying, we have to keep that. Otherwise, it's a lot of retouching work.
Okay, so do that pose again you just had. It was, it was tough, okay? Now keep the feet and give me something where I have a different shadow image in the back. Right. Maybe you can just bring the arms up because now it's all about the shadow that's going on in the back. Right. Maybe bring them out like that. Right. Perfect. Awesome. Let's do something else. We're trying to create a shadow now. Yeah. That was good. Right. Bring that up. Bring it in a little bit. Right. Perfect. That's good. Okay. So now we're just, we're just grabbing the shadow off. We have three images we can combine. We could even do multiple shadows if we would wanted to. Okay. So now we'll change and do the part of bringing depth. So there's, of course, different options you have. You can do it uh, via lighting, going from light to dark to have a gradient, which uh, also can be sort of leading uh, the viewer's eye into the subject, the, the, the key visual part of your, your composition. Um, it can be uh, lines as far as the shadows as we have them. It could be, and that's what I'm going to do now, I'm on purpose going to distort uh, her body figures, her um, extensions like legs and arms and moving closer to the wall. Okay. I like that. Keep that. Keep that. Keep that. Oh, that's cool. Perfect. Very cool. Very cool. Now we're going to keep the legs. We're just going to change head and, and arms. Right. Very good. Very good. Beautiful. Okay, so now let's get into a somewhat, somewhat kneeling position, something like that. Like that, yeah, very good. All right, awesome. Stay like that, Give me, keep, hold that pause. I'm gonna try that from a bit more up so we see the shadow. Oh, that's awesome. Very good. All right. Many images. Let's have a short look. An easy way to get an interesting foreground is to shoot through little lights, little fairy lights. You can get them on Amazon. You've seen the effect on Instagram where people shoot through these lights and you get these big out of focus balls of light in the foreground. On this side I've got a daylight LED light and that side incandescent to give a bit of a color differentiation, make it interesting. The background might go dark so what I decided to do is have a smoke machine from behind and that'll just envelop Juliana with a bit of smoke and lessen the contrast. Okay, and give me that bit of a shoulder again as before. And a hint of a smile, sort of just a mischievous look. Let me just find you through these lights, because it keeps on changing as I move and you move. Drop your chin a little bit this way. Drop, 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 drop your chin and camera. Even more, kind of tilt over. I'm going to come a little closer and drop your chin again. And tilt your head over. This looks great, the background's a little dark, so let's bring in the smoke machine. And give me straight onto the camera as well. Let me find you again, stay like that. I need to figure out where you are. There you go, that's good. Hold that. Drop your chin slightly. And a hint of a smile. Cool. 
Cool. I think we are good. So I hope you enjoyed seeing another version of uh, Two Perspectives. For me, it was a pleasure and an honor to be at Neil's, Neil's studio, uh, working with all his toys and everything he has, and also working with uh, Juliana. She did an awesome job. She was on spot. And um, maybe you can find little things, or it doesn't always have to be a big, big setup to achieve something interesting, and always finding depth in your pictures, and it's not always flat on. So thank you so much. It's usually a lot of cursing and me looking vacant. Okay, now, silence on set. Is he close enough to me? Oh, <laughs> oh for fuck's sake. That's, that is just, no, that's horrid. I should be a Disney prince because I can sing random words and string them together. And I'm also charming.